Previously on the bill. I'll do it. You'll be saying goodbye to your whole life. <laughs> Mac 10, that's a serious bit of firepower. You planning on starting a war? Or finishing what sometimes business can be brutal. Can you hold your nerve? Lawrence. Yeah. When? Getting static. All right. Sound on no picture. Is the camera full to your what? Yeah, I'll tell him. All right. Max. Yes, Terry? I just had a call. You need to get out of there. Cutman and Smith, you're on the move. They're heading towards the workshop. We need to get a rigel on. We're about to have company. Is the big static? Yeah, no picture. Get out. Come on. Move yourself. All right, surveillance is up and running. I'll repeat surveillance, okay? It. Get out. Come on, shift yourself. Get out of there. Stay in the back, okay? What are you doing in my yard? Jezzery security system, sir. We're just here in the area today offering a protection Please. package. I'm not talking about your basic entry level alarms here, sir. No, oh, no, no. This I is top of the range. Go. The... We've got all the security that we want. You heard. Disappear. Bye. Sure. Sorry. As you know, Sergeant Smith has infiltrated a conspiracy to import weapons. He's been posing as an armourer for this guy. Darren Cutler. Now, he's got form for armed robbery and drug smuggling. He's moved into the weapons trade. He works with Kieran Wallace, highly volatile character, form for ABH, bit of a loose cannon. Cutler has talked about shipping in over 100 Baikal gas pistols, easily converted into active firearms. Also, a number of Mac 10s. Now, these are machine guns, known on the streets as Whispering Death. Cutler's told Smithy that the guns are expected imminently, so we've got armed support standing by. Now, while he's undercover, he's known as Lawrence Smith, but still Smithy for short. We've got contact with him through DC Moss, who's posing as his girlfriend. Now, she's visiting him regularly at his house on Breen Street, which we have on the surveillance here. DS Carter is acting as Smithy's handler. So, at present, we maintain surveillance, but we need to be ready to move as soon as we get the word from Smithy. Close. We're in the area today, offering top-of-the-line security packages. State of the art, mate. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> you got out of there by the skin of your teeth, mate. Yeah, just about. All right. Looks like we've got some visitors. Well, that's Kieran Wallace. Who's the other guy? Do you recognise him? That guy is Tommy Rose. Tommy is a local enforcer for the SE1 firm. Tommy and I have had dealings. Where's Cutler? He's gone out for some fags. Who's this? What's it to you? He's all right. Cutler knows him. He's SE1. That's enough, Wallace. I borrowed this off Cutler a week back. 200 quid was the deal. Yeah, 200 if it's clean, 500 if it's been fired. It's not been fired. Just used as a frightener. That's not what I heard. Your mate Jay, wasn't it? Double tap someone. Shut him, Wallace. I've had enough of you shooting your mouth off. Kieran, stop playing with a gun. Give it here. Jay? Who's Jay? Oh, yeah, fine. Double tap. Did you hear that? Mm. You mentioned Jay's name again, and I'll ruin you. You understand? Yep. Yeah. All right, Tommy. Sorry. There's powder residue on the muzzle of this. This has been fired, matey boy. You calling me a liar? You tell me I'm wrong. I said you calling me a liar. Hey, hey, no squaring up in here. Calm down, I'm Perrier. What's the problem? He's trying to skim us for 300 on the gun hire, aren't you, Tommy boy? Yeah, it's been fired. Yeah, I was just a monkey. They told me you was a chancer, Tommy. I said you'd steal the nuts from a squirrel. Just a misunderstanding. 500 quid it is. Can I see you solo for a minute? Bob Gatton wants to set up a meeting about the goods we've got coming in. Yeah, sure. Step outside, shall we? This 
can't mention anything about when this merchandise might be turning up. No? He'll tell us when he's ready. Oh, what, well, we're supposed to just wait around until then, are we? Look, I want to know. Can you find out? All right, I'll try. All right, cheers. You see, there's 500 quid there. Make sure Cutler gets it all. What makes me think you don't trust me? Come on, Smithy, don't let him off the hook. Oh, this could unravel the whole lot. Gonna have to get that gun out of there, get it forensicated. Smithy could be holding a murder weapon now. Kieran Wallace brought a guy called Tommy Rose to the workshop, Gov. Now, Tommy Rose is an enforcer for the SE1 firm. And he brought back a handgun that he rented from Cutler. It had been fired. By Tommy. Wallace let slip the name Jay. He implied that somebody had been shot with a gun by this Jay. Double tapped were his words. OK, Kezia, run a check on all reported firearm incidents in the last 24 hours. You better go London-wide and troll through Crimin for anyone called Jay who's got links with the SE1 firm or any gun-related crime. <sighs> How are the SE1s involved in this? Well, Tommy spoke with Cutler and he mentioned a shipment of merchandise and a meet with Bob Gatting, who bosses the SE1s. He's splitting the risk, isn't he? Using SE1's money and their muscle. Mm. Gatting's involvement raises the ante all round, doesn't it? Look, first and foremost, we've got to get that gun forensicated. Well, I'm due to meet Smithy undercover, Gov. I could get it from him then. OK, if that works for Smithy, go for it. to my world. Yeah, nice. You look the part. Right, you look like you've just broken out of Shadwell Nick. <laughs> Cheers. Look, there's been some developments. OK. Tommy Rose, who bought the gun back, is working as an enforcer for the SE1s run by Bob Gatting. Now, we believe that Gatting's putting up the funds for this deal. Cutler's never mentioned it. Sound him out on it. Also, I need to take the gun. The DA wants it forensicated. Right, OK. Well, I need that gun back to me sharp. If Cutler finds out this missing, I'm going to be in a world of trouble. All right, well, forensics will turn it around as quickly as possible. And there's one more thing. Who's that? Wallace. Hi, what's this? Uh. Stevie just dropped by to give me some uh, oil. She shouldn't be in here, you know. You got everything done. Yeah. Did you get the gun? It's here about half seven. I'm not sure. Okay, you can't leave. Not until I've searched you. <laughs> you keep your grubby little mitts to yourself. Cut those orders. Lift up your arms, darling. Don't touch her. That's oh, all right, Smithy. I don't mind. Feel free. You've got a soft touch. <laughs> Bet you give your girlfriend a nice time. Oh, Kieran hasn't got a girlfriend, have you, mate? Mm. That's what you think. You know, the closest he ever got to getting sex was when someone picked his pocket. <laughs> it's all right, she's clean. Thanks. I shall come again. See you later, darling. And you, Smithy. This came from DC Walker's check on firearms incidents. It was called into Barton Street this morning. Who called it in? The owner of the building site. He arrived to open up at 8am and found those bloodstains and two empty shell cases. Crime scenes have also found a bullet lodged in that sign over there. The drag marks through the blood and the tyre tracks indicate that the body was taken out of here, probably in the car. You started door to door yet? Yeah, we're doing it right now. A neighbour's already come forward saying that she heard two loud bangs in the night at 2.15am. But she didn't see anything? No. She just picked out the curtains and went straight back to bed. She thought it was kids, fireworks. But she's certain about the time. OK. We need a cross match to the gun that Smithy passed to us. Keep me posted, will you? Yep. Yeah, expenses. Take the afternoon off. Oh, that'll come in handy. Going away with Stevie this weekend. What? We're in the middle of a deal. You're going nowhere. Yeah, well, I'm just doing bits and pieces. Unless the shipment's coming in this weekend. 
Could be. Don't know. You're not being straight with me. Anyway, I thought you said this was your deal. That's right. So how comes I've heard a whisper that you see one firm are putting the cash up for this? A whisper? Yeah. All right. So the SE1 firm are putting up the money. It's just insurance. Nobody will try anything with them behind us. You said that this deal was going to happen quickly. 20 Mac 10s, you said 100 plus bike house. Well, I'm sorry, all I'm seeing is expenses. <laughs> this is the biggest deal you'll ever get into. And I don't issue P45s when I terminate people's employment. Do you understand? Yeah. Will you be patient? Give you a time and a place when I'm ready. Well, I can tell you as the guns came into the city last night. Who's our supplier? None of your concern. Look, I've got a meeting with Bob Gatting this afternoon. I'll introduce you, all right? So go home, give that tart of yours a good seeing too, and I'll pick you up later. The gun that Smithy passed to us has been positively matched to shell cases and the bullet found at the building site this morning. Blood was at the scene, clearly someone's been shot, maybe fatally. Uniform have been checking the a &E department, there's been no reports of any gunshot wounds. Wallace's prints are on the gun, but we know he handled it in Cutler's workshop. Tommy Rez's dabs are on the envelope which Smithy passed to us, but not on the gun. He's wiped it clean. Well, we do have a determined time of the shooting as 2.15 a.m., according to a neighbour. Oh, and I cross-checked the name Jay, which was mentioned in connection with the shooting. There's no obvious match there either. So, at this point, we have no victim and nothing that gives us any clear suspect? No, sir. We're awaiting DNA tests on the blood found at the scene. Maybe that will lead us to a victim. Forensics are going to continue doing tests on the gun, but, um... OK. Stick with it. We need a time and a place for the delivery, Stevie. Smithy's got to push Cutler harder. Oh, Sarge, pushing for info when you're undercover is tough. The who, what, when questions don't really wash. I know, but that's what he's there for. I'm sure Smithy can handle the pressure, but if he can't, we'll pull him out. Understood. Keep doing this. Oh, I fall into a deep sleep and then when I wake up, I've got no idea where I am. Hell, well, you're living a lie. It's exhausting. Oh. I had a friend once who went undercover as a nun. Fell asleep in mass and when she woke up, she thought she died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Seriously, though, you're doing great. Look, we're under a bit of pressure. Max wants you to push Cutler a bit harder for the when and where. Oh, why don't you just tell Max to send me in a questionnaire and I'll get Cutler to fill it in? Look, I've tried, right? It keeps cutting me off. All right, chill out. Max understands what you're going through. He's on your side. No, he's on my back. I can feel his eyes on me, watching me all the whole time I'm in that workshop, watching my every move. And I don't get any rest from it when I'm in here. Do you bring that gun back? No, it's still with forensics. So what do I do when Cutler asks for it? Tell Max I want to see him. All right, if that's what you want, I'll set it up. Now, is there anything else you need? A cup of coffee. Strong, black. I've got to meet with Cutler and Gatton this afternoon. Right. We're all set to reactivate the pistols. Excellent. You are armor here? No, he's at home. Well, I thought it was better we did this just you and me. OK. So, it's uh, 200 quid a pot for the Baker Hull pistols, including silencers and 1,500 apiece for the Mac-10s. Correct. Max, why are you? I'll take all you've got cash. You need to see this. So, the supplier's just turned up. Yeah, I'd like to get a sight of weapons. My partner would like to see a sample. I'll show you a sample tomorrow. We are on schedule and ready to do the deal. When you are. Fair enough. It's going to be a piece of cake. Good to do business with you. And you. What have we got? Supplier's called Dimitri. He sounds East European, possibly Russian. Oh, he's news to me. I've never heard of him. Gov, Terry sent it through. His name's Dimitri, which may be an alias. 
OK, we'll send this to Interpol for facial recognition. We've also got the DNA results on the blood found at the building site. It's a match to a Sean Seaton. He's got form for possessing stolen goods and violent assault on his wife. He was paroled from prison three weeks ago. Last known address? With his wife, Julie, in Canley. OK, you better pay her a visit, see what she knows about his whereabouts. Check his bank account and mobile contract. Let's find Mr Seaton, dead or alive. Steve, he said you're not happy with how it's going. Look, if you don't like the way I'm handling Cutler, talk to me. You don't send messages through Steve, you're telling me that I could be doing better. All right, calm down. I just felt Cutler knew more than he was telling you. Yeah, well, maybe he does. But what I do know is he will not be pushed on anything. Sure, you're the best judge of that. But I was right. While you were with Stevie, Cutler had a meet with his supplier. Go on. Yeah, a guy called Dimitri. You think he's Russian, we're waiting on an ID. Did Dimitri say when the deal was going to happen? No, no, he didn't. But what he did say was he said the shipment is in the UK and they discussed showing a sample to get him. Right. Now, about this gun. Stevie said that it's held up in a lab. But what's going on? He's got a problem. It was using a possible murder. I know, I know. You remember Wallace mentioned somebody by the name of Jay in connection with the gun being fired? Yeah. We're trying to identify him. See if you can fish something more about him from Wallace or Cutler. Well, I'll try. But what if Cutler starts asking for the gun? You just have to hope he doesn't. What do you mean, hope he doesn't? It's easy for you to say, sitting where you are, isn't it? Look, Smithy, you're on the line in there, yeah? Yes, I am. We all know that, but you are not alone. We will pull you out immediately if there's any trouble. I've got to go. I've got to sit down with Cutler and get in at the boat arms. The deal's on countdown, Smithy. Just hang on in there, all right? As long as you can hold it together, we'll crack it. Trust me. If I didn't trust you, I wouldn't be going back in there. You just get me that gun as soon as possible. This is Julie Seaton. There's this one, is it? What do you say, sir? Sit down. Sorry. Thanks. The kids are with my mum. I work afternoons just stuffing envelopes. What's this about? Uh, does your husband, Sean, still live with you here? Yeah. Well, I took him back once he got released. Kids miss their dad and he owns half the house, so... And that's working out all right, is it? Yeah? Sean's been behaving himself. Look, what's he done? Uh, when did you last see Sean, Julie? Yesterday afternoon. So he didn't come home last night? No. Well, since he got out, he's got into playing cards with some mates. You know, they're up all hours. Sometimes he crashes with them. They play for money. Money we haven't got. Has he been working with anyone since he came out of prison? Not that I know of. Uh, these guys he plays cards with, one of them isn't called Jay, perhaps uh, short for Jason, James? No, I don't think so. And can you think of anyone he might have fallen out with lately? No. Well, look, yesterday, before he left, he seemed upset. A bit revved up, you know, talked about settling some debts. Have you arrested him or what? We suspect he's been the victim of an assault, Julie. Assault? He may be badly hurt. What's happened to him? We don't know. We're still trying to find him. It might help if you just gave us the names and numbers of the mates he plays cards with. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Go. Sean Seaton hasn't got any credit cards in his name, but he did have a mobile phone contract. I've got the number. TRU have traced it on GPS. We're getting 30-second updates. It's moving. So Sean's still alive? Or someone's got his phone? Yeah, and the rate's moving at. They're definitely not on foot. It's possible Sean was only wounded, and he's still fit enough to drive. OK, well done. Smithy, this is Bob Gatting, the manager of the firm we're going to be doing some business with. Nice to meet you. What are you drinking? Scotch. Five scotches in here. Yeah? So, you've not been long with Cutler then? Local? Mostly. So, what brought you into your line of business then, Smithy? I used to be in the army. What is this, a quiz? No. 
I just like to be sure of who I'm working with. Well, he's 100%. He dug me out of Millwall last week. That's all right. I don't like going blind into anything myself either. No, I'm sure we can trust each other. Your boy Tommy mentioned a fella called Joe. So? Which is that I worked with this bloke called Jason Reeves last year, and he turned out to be a top class prep. And I'm just hoping that this isn't the fella you're working with. No. No, this one's an associate of the firm. He won't be active on this job. Any more questions? Drink up. We're going to have this one away, no problem. To us. Understood, Gov. We're here now. DI says the mobile stopped moving, so it could be in any one of these cars. Well, he gave you Sean's number, didn't he? Call him. Right, it's ringing. Over here. No, not there. Someone's ditched it up here. It's been driven around Canley in a skip. Right, up we go. Well, why me? Age before beauty. Well, you need the exercise. Well, not as much as you. Come on, I'll give you a leg up. Get out of <laughs> it! <laughs> Got a use for that, Rog? Not that I want to discuss with you. <laughs> Get on with it. <laughs> Whoa! What is it? It's Sean Seaton. So, Sean Seaton was shot twice in the chest at close range. We're waiting on post-mortem to find out if any bullets remain in his body. Well, can we get the gun back to Smithy now? No. Forensics are holding it for further examination. It's now key evidence in a murder case. Any news on the skip driver? No, no previous. He had no idea there was a body in his skip. Gov, we've played through the messages on Sean's mobile, and one stands out in particular. Sean, it's Jay. Look, we need to sit down and sort things, mate, yeah? Call me. That message was from someone called George Jacobs. I'm guessing that's Jay for short. Known to us? Crimin says that he has formed for fencing stone and goods, occasionally for the SE1 firm. In one case, Jacobs was suspected of involvement. Sean took the form. OK, nice one. Let's pay Jacobs a visit. Mr Jacobs? Yeah? Detective Inspector Manson. Sunhill Station, this is DC Walker. Can we have a word? Yeah. Do you know Sean Seaton? Yeah, I know Sean, why? When did you last see him? A couple of days ago. What's this about? Sean Seaton is dead, sir. We believe he's been murdered. So I knew this would happen. What do you mean? You knew this would happen? Sean has a habit of finding trouble, yeah? Goes ballistic over nothing. Last time I saw him, he was in a right state. Somebody was squeezing him for money. Did he give a name? No. Like, came to me asking to borrow a thousand. I told him I didn't have him. When was the last time you spoke to Sean in person or on the phone? I left a message on his mobile asking him to get back to me. He never did. Do you know his wife, Julie? Yeah, but I've not seen her for months. Would you be willing to come down to the station and give a statement about what you just said? You don't think I had anything to do with Sean's death? We're just trying to get to the bottom of this, sir. Uh, you're the last known person to speak to Sean. All right. I'll just phone my lawyer first, if that's OK with you. Yes, fine. Before Sean's body was found, Julie said that she never heard of anyone called Jay. They so know each other, Gov. Mm -hmm. So how long were you in the army for then? Five years. It's a while ago now, though. Did you do Northern Ireland and that? Yeah, a couple of tours. Left the battle. But I was army barmy when I was a kid. The cadets in that. Buffering up the boots, spitting the polish tin, rubbing it round and round. I loved all that. So I got started, Sunday cadets. Uh, how come she didn't join up then? 
Well, Cutler, he's my mum's brother, and he told me to work for him, so I did. You're Cutler's nephew? Yeah, he likes to keep it quiet. I am better off working for him money-wise, I am. Go clean my windscreen. I did it this morning. Do it again. Me and Bob will meet the supplier tomorrow. They bring along a sample Mac 10, so I'll need you there to check it out. You just tell me where and when. When I know, you'll know. Finish up here and go home, because I'll need you sharp for tomorrow. When forensics stripped the gun, they found dabs on the top inside of the ammunition clip. They matched George Jacobs. Now, a bullet pulled out of Sean Seaton's chest at post-mortem was fired by that gun. And then we got Jacobs stout cold. But if I reveal the gun and Prince evidence to Jacobs' solicitor, I'm going to have to explain where we got the weapon from. And we can't say Smithy gave it to us without blowing his cover. And I can't give it back to Smithy in case Cutler takes it and destroys it. Gov, sir, you need to take a look at this. These pictures have been pulled from Sean Seaton's mobile, taken six days ago outside George Jacobs' house. That's Julie, Sean's wife, and that's George Jacobs. That's them together. Sean's been watching them. It looks like Jacobs was at it with Sean's wife, or Sean suspected he was. Has she been told about his death yet? Not yet, sir. Uniform are bringing her into the station. Jacobs said he was at the Harrison Club at the time of the shooting. Any CCTV footage to confirm that? We've been trying to reach the key holder of the club, sir, to gain access to the CCTV, but no joy so far. Well, since we want to hang on to Jacobs until we can sort out the question of the gun, a little delay might be helpful. Well, Jacobs lied to us about when he last saw Julie. I could caution and interview him on that basis. OK, do that. And get Max in it. Right, before he went down, me and Sean were mates, huh? Drinking partners. Sean's done me a good few favours. Like looking after stolen goods for you and taking the rap. Sean did three years, didn't he? Is that what this is about? He's come out looking for you. I said we were mates, yeah? I took care of him. And his wife. You take care of her as well. You said you hadn't seen her for months. Yeah. Bumped into her in Canley Market. That's interesting. I've got pictures here of you and Julie outside your house. Here you go, look. These were taken, what, six days ago? Yeah, OK, look. I met her downtown, yeah? I could see she was upset. All right, Sean had run up some debts, got Andy with his fists. I took her home, I lent her some money. So say Sean knew that Julie visited your home, would he be angry, jealous about it? Look, Sean wasn't a bad guy, yeah? He was sad. That's the only word for it. His world came apart when he got sent down. And there's nothing more between you and his wife than what you've told us. So I can see where you're going with this. Now, I came here to assist you to find who killed Sean, but I get the feeling you've got me numbered up as prime suspect. Hang on, I haven't accused you of anything, Mr Jacobs. Look, you told my solicitor that Sean was shot at 2.15am. Now, I told you I was at the Harrison Club at that time. Right? There'll be CCTV. Really? Like you don't believe me, that's it. We stop it now, cos you've got nothing on me and I'm getting annoyed with this. Mr Gear. Yes, sir. Has Julie been told about her husband's death yet? No, not yet, sir. OK, uh, settle her in the soft interview room. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Yes, sir. Where are we at? DC Moss has just arrived at the flat, sir. Max here with the dealer. Um, do you bring me that gun? No, it's with forensics. We know it's been used in a murder by George Jacobs. It's J for short. Oh, has he been charged? He's in the nick now. He's under caution. Oh, if word gets out that Jacob's just been lifted for murder, then Cutler's going to be on at me to get rid of it. Max told me that you lot are going to sort this. What about if we substitute it for a similar gun? No, it won't work. It, it's, it's an ex-military 9mm Browning with a customised hand grip. It's too distinctive. Look, you tell Max that this needs sorting now or I'm stuffed. Smithy's clearly feeling the pressure. Yeah, but wouldn't you? OK, we need to make some quick decisions about this gun. Are you making any progress on the seat and shooting now? We've interviewed Jacob, sir. He's denying it. We need the gun evidence. OK, well, as reluctant as I am to pull the arms deal up, this is a murder inquiry. I can't see any other way forward than hanging on to the gun and pulling Sergeant Smith we out. We can't just kill the op, sir. We're talking about Mac 10 machine guns hitting the streets. We're that close to seizing them. I understand everyone's concerns about this. But if we, we carry on much... Return the gun, but then repossess it. We get the gun back to Smithy, and he plants it in a car, maybe Wallace's. And then Uniform pull it over, make it look like a routine stop, search the car, 
Find the gun. Reckon the uniform could work that, Gina? I think it's a very risky strategy, but I'm sure that Sergeant Stone and PC Valentine can manage it. We need to move quickly, sir. I'll brief Stevie to put the gun back in the workshop safe while Smithy's talking with Cutler. OK, if we can make this work, fine. If not, Smithy gets pulled out and the surveillance op is dead, OK? Stevie? Sir. Have you found Shaw? Yeah. Well, what's happened to him? Julie, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but uh, Sean's dead. He's been shot and we believe murdered. We spoke to his friends and he left the club about 1.15 this morning. We think he was killed about 2.15. When you feel up to it, we need to ask you a few more questions. Drink up. The cops just pulled one of Gatton's boys, George Jacobs. Is that our problem? Will be. That gun he rented through Tommy, Bob wants it lost, and I mean gone forever. Right, well, it's in the warehouse safe. Right, Smithy? Good. Here on a drive. I've got a meeting with Gatton. Do it now. I'm just going to shoot through the gents. You get the car around the front. Move here. Stevie's already down at the workshop. Lay up and wait for my call. I'm headed for the surveillance van. All right, thanks. <laughs> Smithy. Right, you've got 15 minutes to get that gun back in the safe before it's all over. Carmen, we've got a plan to sort it. Right, better be good, Max. Stevie's going to put the gun back, then uniform will repossess it. How do you mean repossess it? Just listen carefully. Stevie's already at the workshop now. Stevie. Uh, Smithy's here with Wallace. Uh, Time's up, they're here. Get out, Stevie. I'm nearly there, Sergeant. Must miss the sequence. I knew I was right. I said the time at the Jacob's Geese had waited to someone. Heard it from a mate of mine. Well, it sounds like your mate's just as loose lipped as you are. Get out now. They're outside the door. <sighs> Smithy, come on. She's having a birthday, dude. <clears throat> well, that's one coming. Oh, just wait, close that for me, will you? Can you pick them up for me? I, I, I need a box of 50. I've got to deliver them now. You want them flowing everywhere? Yeah, we'll get on with it then. Meet me outside. 50. Bring them with you. You drive. I need to drop these off at the pub and then we're going to ditch that gun in the river later. <clears throat> Hurry up.
What's the problem? Step out of the car, please, sir. What? I didn't know that was there, I swear. No? Kieran Wallace, look, it's my car, it's not nicked. Have you got any sure, documents for the vehicle, one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm vehicle. Let's check. Let's have a Index number Sierra 535. You're not going to nick me, are you? The kids have obviously done it. It's fresh done. Can you step this way, please, sir? Register keeper is a Kieran Wallace. Can you tell me how this got here? I've never seen that. Look. Get off me! Get up, give me your arm. Kieran oh. Wallace, I'm arresting you for possession of a firearm. You do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you fail to mention when questioning something from Lady Harley. For the tape, DC Walker has entered the room. I'm now showing Mr Jacobs a gun. Do you recognise that weapon? Never seen it before. Never touched guns. That's strange. Your fingerprints are on this gun. This gun was used to shoot and murder Sean Seaton. Not by me, it wasn't. I'm going to charge you now. Yeah, hang on, before you do anything, I'd like to put something on the table. Something my solicitor obtained. For the tape, that's how it goes, isn't it? I'm now showing D.I. Manson a CD. It's from the CCTV at the Harrison Club, from the chill-out room. Now, it shows me there with the people I told you about, and it's time-coded. I wasn't out on the street at 2.15am this morning shooting Sean Seaton. I was chilling at the Harrison Club, like I said, and this proves it. Now, sorry, Inspector, but you're barking up the wrong tree. It's a dodgy private members club. It's time coded. There's Jacob's largest life, 2:15 a.m. this morning. Could be that the neighbour who heard the shots got the time wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a check again, eh? Maybe another witness has come forward. We still do have Jacob's prints on the gun's ammunition clip. That doesn't prove he pulled the trigger, there, does it? No, sir, it doesn't. Anything else? Well, Julie said that she didn't know Jacobs, and of course we've got the photographs of them together. We haven't questioned her about that yet because she was too upset about Sean. Yeah, whatever. She's lied to us about not knowing Jacobs, so caution her, get her back in for an interview, let's find out what she's hiding. Sir. Sir. You told us that you'd never heard of someone called Jay, or as we now know, George Jacobs. Why'd you lie to us, Julie? For the tape, I'm showing Mrs. Seaton. Two photographs. With herself and Mr. Jacobs outside his house. Now, these were stored on your husband's phone, Julie. You ever seen them before? Yeah. Sean showed them to me the other day. Been following us. I didn't know he knew. I take it you and Mr. Jacobs were having an affair. Sean was cut up. Jealous. Angry. But I told him it was all over between us. Me and Jay love each other. It wasn't just a fling. And did Sean confront Mr Jacobs about what had been going on? Jay tried to meet up with him, but Sean wouldn't... Well, he couldn't talk about it. You have some Mr Jacobs in possession of a gun? No. No. But we found the gun that was used to kill your husband. This gun had fingerprints on it and they belonged to Mr Jacobs. And we know that the bullets fired from this gun killed your husband. It wasn't him. It wasn't Jay. Were you there, Julie? Did you see Mr Jacobs shoot Sean? It was my fault. It was all my fault. Sean mistreated you and you fell in love with another man, but that doesn't mean what he did was your fault. Jay didn't do it. You can't blame him, he wasn't even there. He was at the Harrison Club. I understand how difficult this is for you, but however much you love Jacobs, covering for him is a serious offence. He didn't do it. When did Mr Jacobs tell you that he was at the Harrison Club last night? Uh, oh, today, this, this afternoon, I spoke to him. He's been with us all afternoon, Julie. You can't keep lying to protect him. Well, she isn't really lying, DC Walker, are you? 
You know he didn't do it, don't you, Julie? Sean went crazy over me and Jay. Said he was gonna kill me. So Jay got himself a gun for protection. We had a business meeting last night, so he left the gun with me. With you? Late on, Sean came round the house. Said he'd arranged to meet Jay, wanted me to come along, so... I got in the car with him. And you took the gun with you? In my bag. Sean started shouting as he drove. Stopped at some building site. Said he was gonna kill me. So I got out the gun. Told him to stay in the car. I jumped out, but oh, he was shouting. So I turned round. And I fired it at him. You shot him twice, Julie. I lost it. I was gone. I called Jay. Told him. He came down. Took the gun. Put Sean's body in a skip. Covered him up. Then he took me home. When you put the gun in your bag, did you intend to use it? at the time, to kill your husband. I was sick of him. I'd had enough of his bullying, drinking, gambling everything away. I wanted a new life with Jay. So, yeah, when I took the gun with me, maybe I meant to use it. I don't know. Julie Seaton, I'm arresting you for the murder of Sean Seaton. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention one question, something which you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Now, yeah, I'll give the law know that Wallace had that gun. I don't know. Well, maybe they didn't. Maybe they were following him. Maybe his tax disc was out of date. I don't know. But when I came out of the pub, they had him face down, kissing the pavement. What was he doing in his car? You were supposed to get rid of it. Yeah, and I was going to do that. I had a delivery to make at the pub first, and then I was going to sling it in the river. You left the gun with Wallace, that muppet. It's your boy. Can we trust him? Are you sure he's not going to open his mouth and drop us all in it? Wallace may run off at the mouth, but at least he knows to shut it when it counts. You have got bigger problems with Bob Gatton and the SE1 firm. Jacobs is one of his. No, I don't. Gatton is your problem. Look, how do I know he's even a stand-up dealer and that these suppliers of yours aren't rip-and-run merchants and I'm going to end up in a ditch somewhere? That is exactly where you're going to end up if you don't toe the line. Now, you are in this, Smithy, for the whole deal. Now, I told you, no one walks away from you. Do you hear me? Do that and you're a dead man. So what, you're going to shoot me? I am sick of getting half the story out of you. So when you're ready to tell me the rest, give me a belt, eh? This is getting out of control. I'm gonna go and brief him. We've got to stand Smithy up. He's got to hold on or we'll lose this. This is him. All right, Smithy? You tell me, because I don't know if I can act this for much longer. Do you know what it's like? It's like I can feel my whole life running down the back of my neck when I'm with Cutler. And it's all starting to come on top. But I am still with it. Good. Look, as so long as you don't paint yourself into a corner, Sarge, if you really feel like you can't hack it, all you have to do is say. It's your call, Smithy. Always has been. There's no shame in pulling yourself clear. Sometimes you have to. But you are playing a blinder, Smithy. Planting the gun went like a dream. It was a great result on a murder inquiry. Oh, I'm pleased for you, Max. Oh, I'm really glad you've got a result, mate. This isn't about me. We're a team. You said you wanted this because Cutler's the sort of guy whose guns killed a Carly Samuels of this world. You want to know why I want this? 
You've seen a Mac 10 in action. You know the damage they can do. In CO19, I saw a member of my unit mowed down by a kid with a Mac 10. I was lucky. And I will do anything. Everything I can to keep these guns off the streets. And that's why I want this. Do you still want it, Smithy? Let's do it. Whatever it takes, eh? Next time on the bill. Cutler's very close to pulling the pin. I think this is going to get nasty. What am I for? He sat in the slammer because of you. <laughs> I am an armed police officer! <laughs>